My name is Rosita. I'm 11, and I live in Mexico in Latin America. Every Monday in every school, we have a ceremony and we salute the Mexican flag. We have a civics class and we learn the constitution and the laws of our republic. We all wear uniforms. The salute is led by the principal over the loudspeaker. Right after the ceremony, we have breakfast. For a few centavos, I buy strawberry jelly. You can also buy a hochata, a sort of rice pudding, or chicharrones, which are pig's rinds that are boiled until they become crunchy and served with a spicy sauce. If you're really hungry, there are tostadas, fried corn pancakes with cream, ham, and vegetables. After school, I go home with my friend Sandra. It's a long walk because we live on a rancho a few kilometers from the little village of Santa Cruz in the province of Guadalajara. The sun is hot, but we have so many stories to tell each other that time passes quickly. Today especially because tomorrow is Mardi Gras and our mouths water thinking about what we're going to eat. I tell Sandra the news. My mother has decided to show me the Guadalajara market. I've never been there, and I can't wait to see it. I'm sure we'll find everything there we need to make a real holiday meal. Here we are at home, the work ranch. It's a farming community with lots of houses. My eight brothers and sisters are waiting to welcome me, since I'm the only one in the family that goes to school. This is my grandfather, Pedro. The whole family lives together on the ranch. Parents, children, grandparents, and grandchildren. I have to change before going to meet my mother. The uniform is just for school. Since the weather is always good here, my mother, Maria Jesus, cooks outside. She's preparing lunch for my father who works in the fields. I'm going to bring it to him. Mom heats the tortillas and beans over the fire. They're the basic food here. Tortillas are flat pancakes prepared with a corn base. <laughs> Cooking is also like playing. The meal is ready and I can go and see my father. It's a little further away. I'm glad it's not too far, or the lunch would be cold before I got there. Here I am at last. My father is a farm worker. He takes care of the young trees. Trees are grown here before being transplanted somewhere else. This tree nursery supplies the whole work ranch. My father puts the beans on his tortilla to make a sort of sandwich. Today they're white beans, although usually they're red. I like coming here and spending a few peaceful moments with my father. Before going back, I gather a few chili peppers. They're very spicy, and we use them to make the sauce we use most on Mexican dishes. Like chili con carne, for example, which is made with chopped meat and red beans. We eat a lot of that here. Then I cross the field to meet my mother. I never thought a market could be so big. There are even lots of floors. I'm amazed by everything I see, like this vegetable stall with tomatoes, squash, corn, and so many different herbs and spices. Mommy and Aunt Veronica have decided to make mole for Mardi Gras. Mole is turkey with chocolate. It's a national dish in Mexico. Aunt Veronica's job is to choose the 17 different spices you need to make mole. There are so many different kinds. I'm just beginning to discover them. 
They go from very mild to red hot. And there are thousands of them. This man sells fruit juice. He's serving a guaboya, a kind of lemon with a mango taste. A sweet shop with piñatas. They're like colorful puppets with sweets hidden inside that children have to find. It's hard to choose. There are so many wonderful things. There are so many colors and so many kinds of sweets, like marzipan, candied fruit. I've never seen so many. Since my name is Rosita, I'm attracted to this pink chewing gum. It's not very refined, but it's so pretty. And it's my first purchase. The Guadalajara market is so huge that when I try to get back to my mother and Aunt Veronica at the fruit and vegetable stand, I can't remember the way. I'm completely lost. Luckily, I run into the police chief who's going to help me find them. He makes a call over his radio. And a few seconds later, two of his men are there to help me. They're very kind and I feel better already. I'm not afraid anymore, but I'm still lost. It's not as much fun going through the market with policemen. My mom must really be worried. Maybe she's waiting for me outside. This market is too big. The big day is here, and my grandfather takes me behind the house to see the pulque. It's a cactus from which we get a juice full of vitamins. The problem is there aren't enough leaves on this poor cactus for even one glass. What can we do? For Grandpa, mole isn't complete without pulque. So we go out on the road to buy some from a local merchant who prepares it the way Grandpa likes it. First the cactus juice, then a little cinnamon, some sugar, and of course some hot spice. I don't like pulque very much. It's good for grown-ups. I prefer coconut milk. With a flick of his wrist, the man cuts it with his machete and makes a little hole big enough for a straw. Now this is a refreshing drink served in a really pretty glass. They've begun making the mole. Mom is crushing red peppers after softening them with hot water. I would like to add the different herbs and spices we bought right away. They smell so good. But first, we have to take the skins off the peppers and get an almost liquid cream. Then we cook the corn and the beans inside. That's Gilberto. He's a real ranchero troubadour who goes from farm to farm singing Mexican folk songs on holidays. Usually the mole is made with turkey, but there aren't any in our region, so we make do with chicken, which we cook with corn, the most common vegetable in Mexico. We also add peeled tomatoes, and then we let it all simmer.
Arbolito, arbolito, bajo tu sol. It's starting to smell good, and the children are getting impatient. But the most important part of the mole is the chocolate. We cut it very thin to make the sauce. I'm glad my grandmother is there to help me. To give the chocolate sauce more body, we mix a few salted biscuits into it, which we fry into a little oil. To music. Like in most countries, cooking takes time. You have to stir the sauce a long time to make it smooth. The mole sauce is ready. Now it's time to prepare the thick tortillas we call gorditos, or little fatties. They're made with cornmeal and water. We knead them with our hands until we get the shape we want. I think Mom finished before me. The gorditas will then cook on the plaque above the fire. It's almost night at the rancho and the mole is ready. We serve the chicken with its chocolate sauce, as well as the vegetables, the beans and corn, which cook longer in the red spice chili. The whole family gets together outside around the table with Gilberto and his guitar and the Mardi Gras mole. Whether you use your fingers, spoons, or the gorditas, it's still delicious.